In this video, we shall study how to solve non-homogeneous ordinary differential equations by the method of Laplace transforms. Now, the basic result we're going to be using, stated without proof, the proof can be found in any textbook or the note for this week, is that the Laplace transform of the nth derivative of a function is a polynomial series in the variable s, the same variable that appears in the Laplace transform of a function. And the polynomial series starts with s to the power n multiplying the Laplace transform of the function y, and the subsequent lower powers of s involve the initial conditions y of 0, y prime of 0, all the way up to the n minus 1th derivative evaluated at 0. So if we try to apply this method, you have to have initial conditions. Without initial conditions, this method is not applicable. Of course, you can always call the initial conditions a, b, and things like that, but those initial conditions will be taken along for the ride. This method is most powerful and most convenient when the initial conditions are actually given to you in actual number form. Let's try to solve the following differential equation, y double dot plus 4y equals sine 3t. Now if you've uh, understood the method of uh, the Lagrange method of variation of constants, you can also do it that way. So that's a good way for you to check if this method and that method agree. I won't be doing the check here. I'm leaving that check to the interested student. I'll focus here on applying the method of Laplace transforms. So the way you do this is to take the Laplace transform of both sides. Don't be in too much of a hurry and try to find out what the Laplace transform of sine 3t is. It's good not to do that yet. So by the linearity property of Laplace transforms or any integral transform, I'm going to have this to be Laplace transform of y double prime plus 4 times the Laplace transform of y is equal to the Laplace transform of sine 3t. Here, I will use the theorem that I just stated above for n equals 2. So that gives me s squared, the Laplace transform of y, minus s times the initial condition, y of 0, minus, that's um, s to the power n minus 2 is 2 minus 2, or 0, so I won't write that, y prime of 0, plus 4 times the Laplace transform of y, equals the Laplace transform of sine 3t. Let's put the initial conditions in. So I'm going to get s squared Laplace transform of y. Now y of 0 is 3, so that's going to give me negative 3s, and y prime of 0 is, y dot of 0 is negative 1, so that's negative of negative or positive. Um, I said prime, but I mean dot. They're also prime and dot are interchangeable in this business. Plus 4 times the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of sine 3t. The Laplace transform of y is what interests us because at the end we have to find the inverse Laplace transform to find the y. So I'll solve for Laplace transform of y. So I get s squared plus 4 because Laplace transform of y multiplies s squared and it also multiplies 4. And I'll take everything else to the other side. So I get 3s minus 1 plus the Laplace transform of sine 3t. This can be isolated and I get the Laplace transform of y all by itself as 3s minus 1 over s squared plus 4 
plus 1 over s squared plus 4 the Laplace transform of sine 3t. So now I have the following realization. I can look at the tables of Laplace transforms. Now these tables are widely available in every book, including the book recommended for this course, Boas's book. But you can simply go online and Google table of Laplace transforms and you'll find them everywhere. So in particular, uh, actually let me spend one more step here because it's a good idea to isolate all these terms. So it's 3 times s over s squared plus 4 um, minus that 1 here, that's minus 1 times uh, 1 over s squared plus 4 and then plus 1 over s squared plus 4 Laplace transform of sine 3t. You can look up the Laplace transform of sine t, 3t and write it down here, but it will complicate matters because then you have to do partial fractions and things like that. It's probably just easier to leave it as Laplace transform of sine 3t, although you can take that partial fraction approach. It will just be more work. Now, looking at the table of Laplace transforms, and I'll pretend that I'm looking at that table. Unfortunately, I don't have a table handy to show you. So I just know these things by heart. But if you were looking at a table, you will know that the Laplace transform of cosine of AT is S over S squared plus A squared. You will also know the Laplace transform of sine AT is just equal to 1 over S squared plus A squared. Those are the two basic results I will need for this particular example. Cosine comes with an S, sine comes with a 1, and the denominator always has got S squared plus A squared. Okay, going back here, I get this to be 3 times the Laplace transform of cosine 2t because in this case a is equal to 2 and a squared equals 4 minus now this has got a um, I believe an a there unless I'm mistaken there's an a here so, yeah, there definitely is an A there because everything has to have units of 1 over meters and this has units of 1 over meters. That also needs to have units of 1 over meters. You see how I'm thinking. I'm thinking as a physicist does. So, S squared plus 4 would actually be 1 half the Laplace transform of sine of 2t because you need the factor of 2 to use this formula. And this one, what I'll write here is, well, again, I'll write it as 1 half of the Laplace transform of sine 2t times the Laplace transform of sine 3t. Now you can see how the convolution theorems are going to help us at the next stage. So I can write this using the linearity of the Laplace transform as a Laplace transform of 3 cosine 2t minus half sine 2t plus half the convolution of these two functions by the one of the convolution theorems that I espoused in the first video of this week. I believe it was video number 48. So if you need a refresher on that, that's the video to look at. So you get that by an application of one of the convolution theorems. Now this is beautiful because all you need, now need to do is cancel out the L's on both sides or mathematically it is said by taking the inverse Laplace transform of both sides I end up getting y as a function of t 
So that's the answer to my differential equation. I've solved the differential equation already. 1 half sine 2t plus half of now what is the convolution definition for Laplace transforms? It is just the integral 0 to t sine of 2 of t minus tau. Remember one of them gets the burden of t minus tau, the other one just gets the uh, privilege of having tau. Sine 3 tau d tau. Now you can leave it like that, but it would be a little bit kinder to do that integral. So this integral is not very difficult to do. We have to use a addition formula known as the cosine addition formula. So this is where your basic trig expertise comes into play. That formula is the following. Actually we can discover that formula simply by playing around. So cosine a plus b is cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. I'm going to use c for cosine and s for sine to save time. Cosine a minus b on the other hand is cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b. So if you want the product of two sines, all you have to do is subtract cosine a minus b from cosine a plus b and divide by 2. So sine a sine b is going to be 1 half cosine a minus b minus cosine a plus b. I never remember these product formulae. It's always better to remember one thing solidly in your mind and get everything else by simple algebra. So this is these two formulas are forever memorized because if you forget this one you simply have to go to Euler's formula and isolate the real and imaginary part of e to the i a plus b and e to the i a minus b and you get these identities. So you don't really have to remember anything except maybe Euler's formula. But that if you forget, I guess you have to go back to the drawing board. Alright, now that you have this, let's just uh, write write everything out. It's, we've already done the problem almost. so. I'm ju I'll just focus on that integral because everything else is done. So the integral from 0 to t, sine of, uh, this is going to be your a, and that's going to be your, uh, oops, just that much, your b. Well, there's a further 1 half, so don't forget at the end to multiply it by that 1 half to make it 1 quarter. I'll let you do the results at the end but I'll just focus on this. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to t of cosine a minus b. So a is 2 tau, uh, 2t minus 2 tau, and b is 3 tau. So this part has to be done very carefully. Minus cosine of a plus b. So that's going to be 2t minus 2 tau plus 3 tau. t tau. So that's going to be 1 half the integral from 0 to t cosine of 2t minus 5 tau minus uh, d tau minus the integral from 0 to t cosine 2t plus tau d tau. So I've broken it up into two integrals, each of which is very easy to do. So that's going to be 1 half. Now the integral of a cosine is actually a sine. But because you have all these things here, you have to worry about um, taking those factors out. So one way to do this is to simply um, do another change of variables. So let's do another change of variables. Let's call 2t minus 5 tau as u. And here I'll call this v. So let's do that change of variable here. Uh, u equals 2t minus 5 tau. Then remember tau is a variable here. So du is going to be minus 5d tau or d tau is going to be negative one-fifth du. 
and then the integral when t when tau equals 0 u is going to be 2t and when tau is equal to t u is going to be equal to negative 3t because 2t minus 5t is negative 3t that establishes the change of variables for the first integral so i'm going to, I'm going to get integral from 2t to negative 3t cosine u times negative 1 fifth du that's not too bad now let's play the same game with the v integral so if v is equal to 2t plus tau then dv is equal to d tau because remember tau is the variable not t then when tau is equal to 0 I get v equals 2t just like u and when tau equals t then v becomes equal to 3t so that's going to be the integral from 2t to 3t cosine v times dv is just d tau these two integrals are now extremely trivial to evaluate this is going to be one half times negative one fifth cosine of u is just sine of u from 2t to negative 3t and this one is going to be sine of v from 2t to 3t and so we have solved this problem and then you can put everything together to write the final solution to this problem